This, it's one of the most expensive shrimp in the world. Oh. One of my favorites, this one. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Shrimpies. One shrimp is sticking his little arm up. Oh. They're like the poor man's lobster. If you had to choose between one lobster or eight shrimp. Here in Southeast Asia. God, what the oh. They come in every shape. Oh, wow. Size. Oh. And price. Around 10 bucks it. A shrimp three to four times the other shrimp we just had. <laughs> In this exclusive series, we're demystifying high-end cuisine and following high-priced ingredients back to their source. Today, we're going deep into the world of shrimp. Joining me today, Twin. Venturing far outside the city to a shrimp farm. Oh no, it came back to life! I want to see how locals cook up this tasty treat. Oh my god. Compared to one of the most premium, high-end restaurants in town. Do you know what makes these so expensive? It all starts right here. Today we are in Vietnam's Mekong Delta, a place that's famous for growing shrimpies. And it's actually very rare that we're able to film here. You see, there's some interesting kind of spiritual belief here that if you have people come and film, all your shrimp will die. Really? Yeah. These shrimps are like extremely camera shy. This is not a joke. When it comes to filming permission, we've been refused by over 20 different farmers, all for this reason. Xin Chao An. Luckily, this man allowed us onto his farm, regardless of this superstitious risk. That rumor is kind of go a long way already. We convinced him using sound reason and plenty of cash. I'm glad that money can cure all that ails us. Worldwide, there are 2,000 different species of shrimp. Some are pretty, and some are monstrous. Have you ever had some fancy shrimp? Like lobster, like shrimp, I don't know. Yeah. What's the biggest shrimp you've ever had? <laughs> that, okay, that's a pretty good shrimp. Here in Asia, they're producing 75% of the shrimp the entire world consumes. And most of that shrimp is raised on a farm. Sunshine. Farms are easier cheaper and a better option for controlling quality. It's no different for today's unique blue-handed river prawn. This particular river prawn, it doesn't really produce a lot of profit, but you can get profit all year long. Okay, so it might not be the most money, but it's a safe bet overall. Exactly. This is one of the most commonly eaten shrimp in Vietnam. These little guys tend to be pretty low maintenance, as long as you make sure they have enough oxygen, food, and that their living space is clean. Why is this such a good place to have a shrimp farm? Yeah. First is weather. So it's only had two seasons, like rainy and sunny, that's it. And second thing, it would be the water. It has to be like a little salty only, right. like five to 10 out of a thousand. Mr. Fei starts the shrimp rearing by dumping 100,000 two-day-old shrimp into one of his ponds. So what are these? Fish, natural fish. Natural fish? Yeah, he didn't put any fish here. It just happened to be there, very wow. convenient. <laughs> you can see the difference in size from the two-day-old shrimp to the 14-day-old shrimp. They are seriously tiny. It's pretty cute, but I don't think I get full with that. It would take around four to seven months to sell. That's way longer than I thought. Yeah, I mean, it's so small. Yeah, you want to hold it? Did you kill it? Uh, I hugged it <laughs> with my fingers, and I took its breath away. Oh, my God. Oops. Oh, no. It came back to life and it oh, jumped. Yeah, see, it was playing dead. To put even more fat on their bones, these shrimp stay here for a full seven months before heading to the... <laughs> ooh. Before heading to the market. These river prawns are some of my favorite shrimps ever. I just didn't see it for most of my life. I'm sure you're used to it, it's no big deal. Yeah. But the fact that they have big, spooky blue arms is amazing to me, yes. That, oh my god, that's their phone. Okay, either that they got a phone call or North Korea is attacking. Seafood, seafood, seafood. Mr. Tan has been managing his own seafood supply for 25 years. One shrimp is sticking his little arm. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I got scared. That freaked me out. Offering a fresh selection from all over Vietnam. But this is his best-selling item. The river prawn from the Mekong Delta. Right there. Oh, my God. Yes, okay. I'm saying, oh, he's missing one claw. That's a big shrimp. <laughs> Feel this claw. It's like a wet carpet. Oh, oh ew. Do it again. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa. 
one is thick. Aside from river prawns, local folks also commonly eat what the rest of the world eats, like these white leg shrimp and tiger shrimp. Oh, these have a beautiful stripe pattern on their back, hence the name oh. <laughs> tiger prawn. It's one of the most commonly farm-raised shrimp anywhere. Most of the shrimpies you see here have never ventured into the wild. These guys are all farm-raised. In fact, 98% of all the shrimp you eat come from a pond farm somewhere, and only about 2% are wild-caught. This monstrosity is one of the wild ones. This one is a mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp. Now, I actually, I have tried the mantis shrimp before in Hong Kong. Ooh, a little flashback. Oh, they caught some plastic. Because they don't want them to fight with each other. The owner takes a moment to swing by and inform us, <laughs> which means it's very powerful. Oh. So, can it hurt you? Oh, yeah. What does it feel like? Chunyo. <laughs> oh, it, it had a hole. It went right through. And we're back. Okay. So, actually, this isn't the same mantis I tried in Hong Kong. There are over 400 mantis species, and this is one of them. Oh, oh my god. That's his arm. Oh. Instead of a dangerous punching fist, these guys are equipped with some seriously spiky arms, resembling that of a praying mantis. So they're still not to be messed with. This is nearly three to four times the price. It's very tough to raise them in the farm because they have to be consistently in really cold water, and there's a lot of technology to be involved to raise them to this size, so it's right. very hard. Bought straight from the market, this food is already pricey. But before we see it get the high-end treatment, I want to see what local eateries are doing with this fancy food. Right now, um, we're here in an abandoned factory. It's a large space. It kind of has a cool industrial vibe, like big fans, and they have a fish tank behind you hey. over there. Baba Restaurant is offering a tank-to-table dining experience, specializing in river prawn hot pot and all kinds of seafood. But I've got a better idea. People don't usually do this, but today we brought our own seafood here. This is great. I've never seen this preparation before. Can you tell what he's done to cook it? He didn't cook it. <laughs> That's right. Our first meal of the day is prepared green. That means the shrimp is raw. That's right. We challenged this chef to push his creative culinary skills. And what did he do? Well, almost nothing. But that's on me. He just kind of stripped the tail away, and then he's left the head, so you're like, ah, right, it's a uh, shrimp. We like to resemble stuff back together. Yeah, I like that. Oh, now that is pretty big for eating raw. Oh my god. Give it a little bit of a dip. What do you think? That's a bit big for eating raw. Yeah. It's so fresh and it is so firm, yeah. I couldn't even bite through it. Right, I'm gonna take a smaller bite this time. Okay, let's do. It is softer, it's like tender, but the meat itself is kind of stringy. And so I wonder if that's because it's old. People say lobster when it gets really big or old. It's not ideal, so I wonder if that's the same. But overall fun, I think this would be a good drinking food. Yeah, 100%. And our final course. Damn! <laughs> Our second dish features these praying mantis shrimp. First, he removes the sharp, dangerous bits, but keeps the cool parts. These guys have never been in the deep sea, but at least now, they're getting deep fried. Then stir fry, along with fried pork fat, chili sauce, garlic, more garlic, and actually, more garlic. That is huge. It's not a shrimp. Alien looking. I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of shrimp. What is what that? It's got teeth on its arms. You put your thumb in here, it'll make you regret it. Look at this. this. That's the part. It's like, it's weird to get it out. It's hard to get it out. Right. Oh, wow. That's a clean one. I'm going to put some of these pork and garlic crumbles inside the body cavity like it's a little shrimp taco. Cheers. that strong like aquarium taste to it. Actually, it tastes like crab meat to me. I mean, it's got a hint of that crabby kind of sweetness. It's still a bit mushy, the texture. It's not like a normal bouncy shrimp. Overall, 
pretty good? I think really it's good. really good, yeah. Is that worth paying three to four times the other shrimp we just had? Okay, now you're ruining it for me. <laughs> I think it's good, but it's not that expensive. Shouldn't be. I don't think that it can be made much better than this. Even here in this abandoned warehouse looking restaurant, this big pile of shrimp comes in at $83. It's an expensive ingredient, no matter where you are. But now, we're headed to one of the classiest spots in town, seeing how they turn up the heat and the price on this tasty treat. Our final destination, Square One. Chef, Sunny. Located inside the Park Hyatt Hotel. Here, they're offering high quality food with a luxurious backdrop. What do you like about working with shrimp in the kitchen? Personally, I love shrimp. For me, it comes down to the cooking technique. Whether you overcook it and make it tough, you undercook it and it's raw for the wrong kind of prawn, whatever it is to cook it with some respect. What is the wrong kind of prawn to have raw? Because we just had the river prawns. We, not really, you shouldn't eat those raw, yeah. I knew he no, was no. gonna say that, because it's fresh water. We got parasites. Did it come from the river or? It was farm raised. You should be fine. Should, hey. We should be fine. We'll know within a couple, of, a couple of hours. Oh, boy. Oh, it's coming soon. Let's talk about another type of shrimp we haven't covered yet. The carabinero. Carabinero. The carabinero. Yes. This comes from the Mediterranean, around Spain. It's one of the most expensive shrimp in the world. It's right here. I'm looking at it. This expensive delicacy is one of the world's most coveted prawns, renowned for their size and their color, which they get by feeding on pink plankton. These are actually recommended to eat raw. It's one of my favorites, this one. Here, these fancy imported shrimpies are slightly torched for 10 seconds. Do you know what makes these so expensive? It comes down to consumer demand. There's a business behind it as well, but for sure, these, amazing taste. I think when you try them, it should be part of the explanation why they're so expensive. Okay. Then the chef places it on an oyster shell and tops it with Hamon Imberico, one of the finest hams in the world. Okay, so what does the foam do? It's a flavor. It's made out of a Hokkaido scallop. We make it just like a cappuccino. Just like a scallop cappuccino. I feel go. fancy. That's a great visual, yeah. Cheers, guys. Oh, wow. Wonderful soft texture, no stringiness, and there's oyster in there? There is. We take the oyster and we make it into an emulsion, similar to a mayonnaise. This is your own creation? It is. I like it, big fan. Can I have 12 more? <laughs> For our climactic shrimp dining experience, we'll see the humble river prawn served two ways. Now, how elegant is this? Huh? So let's talk about it. First, Jasper grilled prawns. Step one, put a stick up its butt area and roast. Remove the shell and place it atop a bisque. Eat with caviar and an herb emulsion. Imagine if they just like boiled your body liquids and then they put your body like on top of the body liquids. That's what they've done here with the shrimp. That's a good bite. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. The sauce is kind of gentle, buttery, almost creamy, with plenty of that shrimpy essence in it. It's not super powerful. And you can see here, like, the shrimp is not cooked. It's still, like, you can have that firm texture still of the mm. raw shrimp, right? I think that this kind of shrimp is just kind of a stringy shrimp. Yeah. I don't really mind it. It's mm. fine. But overall good, yeah? I would like more of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point of fine dining. Yeah, I know. Something happened from the abandoned warehouse. Six giant shrimp, and then we're here. We have one shrimp. One. Our final dish has led us here, the caramelized river prawn. This is a more Vietnamese inspiration going into this Upgraded. dish. Upgraded. First, making the caramel sauce. A combination of sugar and vegetables, along with fish sauce and soy sauce, begin to cook down. On the side, the shrimps are blanched with onion and ginger. Add coconut oil, the sauce, leeks, and finally, sneak in some chili and peppercorns. Oh, it's got a giant head and a little tail. So I'm gonna pull, oh, the tail kinda comes pretty easily. Cheers. Mmm, that might be my favorite, yeah? Oh, wow. So to me, that tastes much more traditionally shrimpy. A great, dense, bouncy texture, cooked all the way through. Very satisfying. Great comfort food. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Well, do you feel comforted? Yeah, like, it's like warm. When you eat it together with rice, I think, yeah, like a family vibe, I would say. Yeah. Right, a good sharing food, if you had more meat to share. <laughs> Shrimp. It's one of those foods like oysters where it's kind of everywhere. Whether you're at a super local market, a street food stall, or a place like this, kind of everybody has access to shrimp. But it's all about what you do with the shrimp. I'm curious if the people watching this would consider this a fancy food or just a normal meat. But to me, it still feels fancy. Maybe that's because when I was a kid, I was in the Midwest, far from the ocean, and it was just hard to get my hands on shrimp. Eating shrimp cocktail like once a year at Christmas was like, <laughs> amazing. But for you, you grew up with shrimp. Uh. 
I'm surprised. Like the first one, I never thought of making shrimp that way. So I do believe that to make it feel fine dining, then it has to do a lot with the cooking technique as well, and not just uh, the ingredient itself. I totally agree. Shrimp cocktail ain't got nothing on shrimp in Asia. Once you get outside, boring old traditional shrimp, there's a world of possibilities you never knew existed. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality, custom graphic inlay. And our street food around the world graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A piece. Big thank you to Twin for joining me today. Can I get a normal handshake? Oh, a normal one? <laughs> That's not a normal one. <laughs> I did my best. You can follow her on Instagram. Polite DMs only, gentlemen. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A piece. <laughs>